Today we're going to be looking at the Pro Golfer achievement in Bank Shop Billiards 2. This is an achievement for getting par or under on all of the tables in the golf segment of the game. The trick to this really is that par is cumulative and you don't have to necessarily get par on every table as much as you just have to get par total. So you can have plus three on some tables if you have minus three on others. The first time I played this game, I actually had plus seven and plus five on a few tables, but the rest of my score balanced out to make it zero. On this first table, it's pretty basic. You're gonna start with the stripes, just get it in. Don't touch the red balls because anytime you come into contact with them, with the cue ball or any of the balls in play, it's going to add two to your score. So avoid them at all costs. Pay a lot of attention to the powers in this game. You really have to finagle with the Y button to adjust the power you hold down Y and move the left stick. It takes forever. It's not a very good mechanic at all. It's not very responsive. And a lot of the trick to most of these holes is just hitting the balls in play without actually hitting any of the red balls. For this table, you avoid the red. The first shot I thought was important to utilize just getting the cue ball over to the side with the eight ball and then focusing on lining up the eight ball shot. It does take both your hits, but it still gives you par on the table. So in the end, I found it to be worth it. You do not have to get less than par on all of the tables. You just have to get par or under. For this table, thought it easy just to go directly for the nine ball, then you go for the red stripe and then the yellow stripe after. As long as you adjust your powers accordingly, all of your shots will be pretty clean. This last shot's a little tricky because you want to hit that ball in without uh, messing with any of the red balls and that patch in the bottom right corner is a little tricky. But if you use the power 12 for that last shot, it should avoid them just slightly. Table four looks a little menacing. What I did was just shoot the one ball out of, well, shoot it into the pocket and knock a red ball to get the cue out of the, out into the open. It does give you a negative two, but I thought for this, it was important to get the cue ball out on its own. So that's the method I went with and then you just line up your shots and take the rest down. Sometimes it is important to utilize the red balls. It just will add negative two to your score, but with a par of five, you have that room to finagle with it. Again, watch your powers so that the cue doesn't come back and touch the red balls again. The negative two is for each turn that you hit the red balls. You can hit three on the same turn and it'll still count as negative two. This one's a pretty simple hole, you just have to adjust your power so that your cue ball won't come back up and hit that cluster of red balls right above the eight. For this one, I thought it was just easier to start with the eight ball, knock it into that corner pocket. And then you have pretty much a straight shot with that one, and then you can focus on the orange stripe. Again, watch your powers because you don't want the cue ball to ricochet off of these orange stripe and hit one of the red ones. A real key in this game is to utilize the turns that you're given. You're given five in this, so you may get greedy and want to finish it in negative two and strike the ball a little too hard, but then it most likely, in my experience, came back to hit the red balls and took your score down even further. A real key in this game is to realize that you're playing golf on a pool table, you're not playing pool. You don't have to hit balls with every turn and you don't have to get under par. You just need to figure out how to utilize the turns you're given to have the best results. This one's pretty easy. You just have to actually get the cue ball lined up with the eight. And you'll see what I mean when you try this hole. But once you get the angle, it'll go hole in one. For this one, I tried to avoid the red balls, but I utilized the yellow. I actually sank a yellow ball, which is negative one, 
for each turn that you sink a yellow ball on, so you can sink three in a turn, it'll still and it will still only be negative one. But I decided to sink one for negative one would be better than hitting the red balls for negative two. And then you just line up your eight and shoot it right in. Table nine looks a little scary. There's a lot of red balls in this and it's very intimidating. Just get rid of your one and then you can bring your cue ball around and work on the blue. Don't try to cut and go through the red balls. That's just more trouble than what it's worth. You really just want to get your cue ball to the other side of the big cluster so that you can focus on the blue ball there. And I found it easier just to angle it up into that center top pocket. You just want to be careful that your cue ball doesn't hit the cluster or go into a pocket because that's also negative one. On this table it's a little overwhelming because there are a lot of things going on. You really just want to take it one ball at a time. Be mindful of your powers so that you don't accidentally scratch. And that shot didn't go exactly how I wanted. Obviously I would have rather it go into that top pocket, but it gave me a great shot to follow up with, which ended up being okay. Again, you're just going for par. If you try to get too stuck in how low can you go, you end up making a lot of frustrating mistakes. You really need to utilize your strokes and take advantage of all that you're given. Since the yellow balls only count against you if you sink them, feel free to use them to manipulate the table. It doesn't count anything if you just hit them. This table too looks a little overwhelming, but you really just have to go for it. Even on this table, if it takes you an individual strike for each ball, you'll still be under par. So don't worry too much about that. You can even afford to sink one of the yellows if you have to. If you're familiar with this game, you also know that the X button and the B button manipulate other ways to strike the ball. I didn't use those for anything. I exclusively used the Y button to adjust the power of the shot. For this table, you just knock the one in and then you turn around and get the eight. Be very careful with your power because you don't want to go up into that cluster of red balls above you. For this, I couldn't figure out what power I wanted, but I en ended up settling with four and it turned out to hit the ball but come up just enough so that it did not interfere with the reds. When I did three, it didn't quite push the ball in and when I did five, it always went up into the reds, so that's what I found to be the safest. I hated this table. It gave me so much trouble, but in the end you just really need to be patient. Um, understand that you have five shots and only four balls, so you have time to go to the bottom and sink those three and then come back up and get that fit, that fourth yellow stripe at the top. 
So one of your shots for this will just be getting your cue to the proper position and that's okay. Be very careful. You just wanna ease the ball in without popping up into the reds. I didn't even need that shot to line up my cue ball. I ended up, it ended up going into a position where I could just shoot the yellow stripe right in. Just be very careful not to pocket the cue at the end because again, that adds to your score. There are a lot of balls in play on this table. All you need to focus on are the two striped balls up in the corners. Feel free to hit the yellow all you want and you're actually going to utilize a yellow to knock in that stripe in the other corner. Just try not to sink the yellow as well, but if you do, it's fine. You've got plenty of shots here. And if you sink the cue into that bottom middle pocket or any of the pockets, again, it's fine. You've got plenty of, plenty of shots to take. This board gives you the urge to go around all the yellow, but it's really unnecessary. Just use the yellow to hit in the striped ball in the corner and try not to sink the yellow ball in the process. For this ball, you really can't get through it without hitting red balls. I got a little frustrated and it actually worked out for me. So by moving all the red balls around, my cue came and hit the eight ball. But you have five shots, just take your time. You can take three, you can take two to line up the eight ball, one to hit the eight ball, and the other two for the red ball that you touch in the process. You really have a lot of room to finagle. With that, it's just all about the angle, lining up your shot and doing it at a power the standard power, 25, so that the yellow ball doesn't ricochet into the reds. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you have any achievement requests, just let me know in the comments and I will make more videos. Part two to this video, the other 18 of the 36 holes, can be found at this link. Thanks!